So to set us up for all of those, we can hear now from a man who's been described as the father of social investment. Sir Ronald Cohen is a preeminent international philanthropist, venture capitalist, private equity investor, and social innovator. He's the president of the Global Steering Group for Impact Investment, an organization founded on the belief that business and investment done well with societal and environmental impact at the heart of decisions can benefit all people and the planet. Every day, Sir Ronald says he strives to live by a simple principle, do good, do well. I'm pleased to introduce Sir Ronald Cohen, who has recorded this address for us. It's a pleasure for me to join you at the International Clean Tech Congress uh, to talk about uh, how we transform capital to aid the transition uh, to uh, zero emissions. And I want to start by just highlighting the forces which are working today to change our world because they have very real effect on our ability to cope with our environmental as well, by the way, as our social uh, challenges. The first force is a change in values, which uh, started 10 or 15 years ago among young people and then spread to a much broader population, where consumers uh, didn't want to buy the products of uh, companies that are creating harm, environmental or social harm, uh, nor did uh, they want to work for these companies. And uh, investors took notice of this and it started to drive uh, what today we call ESG investment, environmental, social and governance investment, which at the time when I chaired the G8 Social Impact Investment Task Force in 2013-14, uh, a decade ago, um, stood at about 13 trillion and today is uh, around the 40 trillion dollar mark. And at that uh, time, uh, many people uh, didn't know of the existence of uh, impact investing. There was virtually no impact investing around. Uh, we defined impact investing in the G8 Task Force uh, report, the invisible heart of, of markets, as uh, investment that uh, measures the profit, but also the impact that it creates. And today, impact investment is around $2.4 trillion. Within that, over the past three years, we've seen a completely new form of uh, security emerge, the sustainability linked bond and loan market, which uh, came from nothing uh, three or four years ago to $1.4 trillion um, uh, today. And uh, what sustainability linked bonds do was inspired by the social impact bond, which was created in the UK in 2010 it effectively reduces the interest rate that a company pays if it has achieved certain preset uh, targets uh, on the environmental side or on uh, the social uh, impact side. So we have a major change in financial markets today, which is driving the optimization of risk return and impact, instead of just driving the optimization of risk and return, which has characterized capitalism until now. The second major force is the force of technology, and we're all very much aware of that. Um, Tesla is the first example of an impact venture that achieved a trillion dollar valuation again by optimizing risk return and impact. Tesla would not have got its first consumers, raised its first money or attracted its first talent if it hadn't been for this mission to improve uh, environmental emissions from the automobile industry. And it led 
to a total disruption of uh, the whole industry and, of course, to the creation of great value for investors in Tesla. And the third force, which is the one which most of you probably are least aware of, is that uh, technology enables us today to measure in a granular way the impact that companies create, their environmental impacts as well as their uh, social impact. To give you an example of the work I have uh, chaired at Harvard Business School in the Impact Weighted Accounts Initiative has given us uh, insights on environmental pollution by companies that we never had before. Out of 3,000 companies whose impacts we have uh, measured and translated into monetary terms, 450 create more damage than they make profit uh, in a year. A thousand companies create damage equivalent to a quarter or more of uh, the profits they make. And so two thirds of companies could transition to zero emission much more easily uh, because of their impacts relative to their profits are 25% or, or, or less. If you take these three forces together, they enable the business sector to begin to bring solutions to the big environmental challenges we face. Let's uh, recognize the fact that governments have been talking for four decades about reducing environmental emissions without very much progress. Part of the reason we haven't done a better job environmentally is that it's not governments that create pollution, it's companies. And companies have not had uh, the necessity to disclose their emissions. Today, the SEC is forcing that. The mandatory publication of all environmental impacts a company creates is going to have to be disclosed. And although there's some pushback in the US, there's little doubt that these new regulations are going to come into force. The EU has already brought the mandatory disclosure of the impacts created by investment vehicles. It's done it through a categorization tool, uh, which is of some help, but which does not provide uh, a totally satisfactory solution from the point of view of investors who want to know how different companies' impacts compare with one another. And then you have the efforts of the International Sustainability Standards Board, uh, headed uh, by Emmanuel uh, Faber, which is standardizing both social and environmental impacts in quantity terms. In order to bring these impacts into financial analysis and the valuation of companies, we need to value them. And that's what I have devoted and continue to devote a lot of time to. I chair the International Foundation for Valuing Impacts, a spin-off from Harvard Business School, which brings together a group of uh, experts in the field of uh, accounting, finance, environment, society, and, and so on, to value impacts and provide us with standardized numbers for a ton of carbon, a litre of water, soil erosion, diversity in the workforce, and so on and so forth. And you can all go to the Impact Weighted Accounts uh, Initiative uh, site at Harvard Business School and have access to all the information that we have published on uh, 10,000 companies or so uh, impacts in monetary terms. This transparency is going to give investors and governments the ability to influence the behavior of companies in a major way. The work at Harvard already shows that the companies that pollute more are worth less than their competitors within the same sector. This means that the cost of capital of a polluting company is higher today than the cost of capital of one that pollutes less. 
that is hugely uh, significant in terms of the incentives that the management has um, to drive uh, the valuation of a, of a company upwards rather than downwards. So transparency also gives government the ability to provide incentives through tax uh, credits for companies that deliver positive impact or through taxation. Uh, we're already talking of a carbon tax and of a, uh, a sugar uh, tax. So the implications of the, the arrival of impact transparency are massive. And if taken together with advances in technology and the change in values, we are transforming capitalism, not just some flows of capital, but our capitalist system from uh, focusing only on the generation of profit at an acceptable level of, of risk to the generation of both profit and impact at acceptable risk. And so my message today is that huge flows of capital are already available. 2.4 trillion of impact investment, 40 trillion of, of ESG to address environmental challenges. And what we need to do is to set priorities and to begin to put our new approaches to work. For example, uh, the uh, G7 allocated uh, eight and a half billion dollars to South Africa for a clean transition. Let us tackle the issue of mining companies and mining workers and the need to reskill them to get them into jobs. And let us use the impact approaches, which I describe in my book, Impact, to do so. We are on the verge of a revolution that will bring financial markets to tackle environmental challenges through our whole economic system. Let us get on now with the job of hastening the arrival of transparency and tackling specific issues in specific countries at scale using impact approaches. I wish you well in your work today and look forward to hearing the result of your deliberations. Thank you.